thank you all for coming. I'm very happy to introduce you to my friend, the friend uh, Shinshoni, uh, who is a professor of physics at Paradigm University. Brad uh, did her PhD at the Whiteman Institute, uh, and then did some uh, postdocing in the States, and then went back to Israel. Uh, and currently, she's a professor at Barnum University. She's an expert on fractional quantum Hall effect, uh, two dimensional systems like graphene, like the visor she's going to talk about today. Uh, but she's extremely knowledgeable about everything condensed matter interactions, many body. Um, so it's always a pleasure to discuss uh, physics with her. Uh, she might still have some time on her schedule uh, tomorrow. So if anyone uh, didn't get a chance to uh, sign up, you can still uh, do that. Um, so thank you for coming in front. I look forward to your talk. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. This is my first visit in uh, uh, in the field and uh, this department, I hope not the last. And um, okay, so I'll, I'll use this just. Uh, okay, so the the story I'm going to tell you about uh, today, actually, maybe I'll better use the mouse. Oh, the zoom, never mind. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a work uh, that uh, is a collaboration with an experimental group, uh, and it's related to uh, the general structure of the phase diagram and the quantum whole regime of bilayer and thing. Um, let me first uh, mention, so just looking at this picture, uh, the main idea that I'm going to um, uh, convey to you today is that uh, uh, graphene, uh, graphene platforms in general, in strong magnetic fields, uh, which realize the quantum homology, are uh, a nice playground for uh, many body physics, for uh, getting a rich set of phases. And uh, these phases are driven by interactions. And uh, the main story of our work is to uh, get some hints from the experiments and, and understand what are the effective interactions, what is the nature of the interaction that control these phases and allow them to, to happen. So, uh, the main uh, uh, person who did uh, basically all of the work, or most of the work, is my postdoc, Udit Tana, at Barilan. And uh, the, uh, the collaboration is better with Dana Pati Morty from Kentucky and Herbfer from Indiana. Uh, these are, uh, we have a long term uh, collaboration for many years on some. Of quantum wave effect in graphene. And uh, on the experimental side, we collaborated with the group of uh, uh, Jun Zhu from Penn State and her student, uh, Ken, Ken Wang. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's get, and these are some funding agencies I have to, uh, to thank. And uh, let's go on. Um, oh, sorry, it's there. Uh, um, Right, so uh, a, a brief introduction. So I'm sure uh, all of you here must have heard about uh, graphene and the quantum Hall effect and all that. Let me just emphasize the essential things that I need for my uh, my talk. And the quantum Hall, so graphene, as you know, is a, is a two-dimensional material and. Um, uh, and, and the, the way it was uh, actually the smoking gun for it being two dimensional is the observation of the quantum Hall effect, and that's um, a, a Nobel Prize work of uh, Novosel over and Guy. Uh, the data I'm shown here are this, on this paper, and and the. Uh, the thing about uh, uh, graphene is that it's a uh, uh, it's a Dirac material. It has a, a Dirac dispersion, and that reflects on 
בקוואנטום הול אפקט, you observe there in comparison with the standard today, like value marcenide or semiconductor quantum web. And there are two features that are special to graphene that I want to emphasize, and at this stage I'm focusing on a monolayer graphene, so we'll get to the binary soon. The first thing is that if you look at the, the step size of the quantum hole plateau, this is a sigma x y, you see that the step size is four. And the reason is four uh, of the quantum conductor over h. And the, this uh, 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 signifies the fact that uh, uh, in addition to the spin, there is another discrete degree of freedom in the thing, and uh, it is called the valley. So the valley, are, there are just uh, two uh, inequivalent points in the brilliant zone of uh, the graphene crystal, uh, which uh, where uh, there is a Dirac point. So there are two Dirac cones, in fact, that are uh, uh, time reversal complementary to each other. And uh, together with the spin, all together, you have four flavors, not two. So the manifold of, uh, of generalized spin is richer, and we'll get to that. The other unique thing to graphene as opposed to a, a standard two bag where the dispersion is quadratic is the fact that uh, the Landau level spectrum looks different. There are particle and whole symmetric Landau levels. They are not equal space, they go like a square root of, uh, of, uh, uh, of n, the, the quantum number. And the most important thing that I want to emphasize. Uh, in my talk, uh, for our purposes, is that it has a Landau level at exactly zero energy that is pinned to zero. So that you don't have in two deg, right? I mean, the spectrum of uh, uh, monic oscillator starts from finite energy. You have a zero state, zero energy yeah. state, uh, and in clean systems, it's, uh, it's vastly degenerate flat band, if you like, that is pinned to zero energy. And um, of course, uh, uh, interactions as well as uh, uh, certain external fields can split the, the degeneracy here. Uh, but uh, the way it's, it happens, any splitting of the, the degeneracy is always particle or symmetric. So uh, it's, this zero Landau level is unique to, to graphene, and most of the uh, physics uh, that is uh, special to, to graphene uh, platforms is, is focused there. Okay, so uh, in particular, uh, let us uh, briefly discuss uh, uh, the mu equals zero, one holds that is a state that doesn't exist in a, in a two days. It's a, a quantum hole plateau state where sigma xy is at plateau at zero and it's at exactly zero phi, namely at the uh, undoped pristine graphene. Um, now, um, uh, the, the, um, the effect that I'm going to discuss that is directly our work is actually not related to mu equal zero, it's for finite feeling factor, but before that I want to give some background about the mu equal zero state because that's an important clue of something that is going on more generally. So, uh, there have been, uh, you know, quite shortly after uh, quantum hole in, in graphene was discovered for the first time, and it has been experimentally observed that strong magnetic field open a plateau there, and there is a, a, there is a, a, a new equal zero quantum hole state. There were uh, questions about its nature. What is the nature of the state? And uh, 
Uh, there was some, I don't want to get into details of that story, but there, there were some contradiction between naive expectation from, uh, from uh, single particle uh, uh, calculations and the experimental observation. The experimental observation was that the state is an insulator. Okay, it's an insulator at uh, low temperatures, and uh, but it has a, a plateau in sigma x, y at zero. So it's very different from all other quantum whole states, where at the same time that you have a plateau in sigma x, y, you have a zero resistance. It's, these are conducting states. So the mu equals zero state is not conducting, it's insulator. And, and uh, there was a question about uh, what physics uh, is driving uh, its ground state. And quite quickly, it was realized that it must be interactions because the non-interaction, non-interacting picture gives the wrong answer. Uh, but um, um, uh, another question is what kind of ground state you can have. And as I mentioned before, because of the S because of the full flavor thing, you have a manifold of SU4 rather than SU2 uh, for the possible uh, uh, broken symmetry states that can be realized in in, uh, uh, in perfect. So, so in uh, 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 once again, two-dimensional, uh, the standard two-dimensional quantum hole state, we know that interactions in quantum hole regime can induce uh, ferromagnetism, for example. But here, there are many more options, okay? And the ferromagnetism is just driven by uh, a sort of a stoner instability. You have uh, a passive interactions and exchange can, can uh, encourage a ferromagnetic ground state. But because you have SU4 symmetry to break, there are many options, okay? And then, um, Theoretically, there was, a, a, I think, a seminal work by uh, Maxim Haritono, who unfortunately kind of disappeared <laughs> over the years, but uh, this, this work was really, you know, a very simple but very uh, important uh, breakthrough. Uh, he tried to, uh, I mean, there were, of course, uh, much earlier uh, works before by you know, McDonald and Dan Kishore Levitov and, and some others. But the Khalidon work was the first one that actually had predictions that are um, consistent with some experiments, as shown in the result. And what the Khalidon realized is the following. First of all, when we talk about electron-electron interactions, there are, of course, the Coulomb interactions, the long-range Coulomb interactions, maybe screen, depending on the setup, but the problem with the Coulomb interactions is that they are SU4 symmetric. So once you introduce them and you have you, you are guessing some kind of a ferromagnetic state or, or charge order or whatever, the Coulomb interaction help give you stiffness to that state, but they don't help in selecting all the states are equally probable in a sense. However, uh, there are uh, also short-range interactions that are, I mean, Hubbard-like, that are lattice scale. And on the lattice scale, uh, the interaction is not symmetric. It is symmetric uh, in the spin sector, but not in, in the valley. The valley is a degree of freedom that knows about the crystal structure. And on a lattice scale, the SU2 of the valley is broken into uh, U1 cross uh, Z2. So essentially, uh, if you think of the simplest uh, short range interaction uh, model that captures the correct symmetries, it would be something like an XXZ uh, model in the valley. Okay, I, I'm not writing yet equations, I'll come to it later. But uh, what I want to point out here uh, as an introduction is that uh, Haritono uh, introduced this uh, lattice scale interaction model. He did the mean field calculation, 
and obtain a phase diagram. And in this phase diagram, you identify uh, four phases. Two of them are spin order. Okay, one of them is the, fer the good old ferromagnet, but there is also a candid antiferromagnet, which you see here uh, how it's realized on the honeycomb lattice. Okay, it's a it's an anti-ferromagnet, but with some uh, some tint angle uh, towards the uh, the, the Zeman, which is dictated by the Zeman thing. Because remember, we are we are not in a zero magnetic field, we are in quantum hollow. So there is a magnetic field, it has a Zeeman effect. The Zeeman effect is, is small, but it's, uh, it's stabilizing some kind of uh, uh, cathode antiferromagnet, it can, okay? And, um, ah, I, sorry, I forgot to mention what are the axes, I hope you can see them because it's a bit dark, but uh, these are the parameters of the interactions in the model of Haritonov, and as I said, it's X, X, Z, so there is U, PERT, and U, Z. Only two parameters. And, uh, and in this phase diagram, he allowed them to have any value, positive, negative, okay? So for some range, for some range you get the spin ordered state, and you get uh, also charge ordered state. Uh, one is a charge density wave, and the calculate distortion, which is you like the most exotic, it's a kind of uh, a valley coherent state, uh, which uh, uh, can be realized uh, as, a, uh, as a state where uh, also translation symmetry is broken by having a bond order of diamonds on the honeycomb lattice. Okay? So this, these are the, all the possible phases that you get if you just allow the interactions to have any value. Yeah, questions? So, so here the interaction is valley independent and the values are... Uh, no, no, it is valley. So if I, 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 I write it a little later, okay. but it is, if you write it in terms of uh, Pauli matrices of uh, spin and valley, so in the valley it looks like uh, tau x, tau x, uh, x, x, z. Okay. Okay. And the parameters of the XXZ are you pair up and use it. Okay. And all right. So now notice that actually, if you look at this phase diagram, the uh, the chart order the uh, phases are favored by a regime where the interactions are negative. Okay, are attractive. Actually, not surprisingly, I mean, to get such a state to be stable. And then the question is whether it's, it's relevant. So, okay, we go on. So that's a theory, that's a prediction. And then shortly after came an experiment uh, from uh, exactly, uh, well, uh, 10 years ago, Andrea Young, some of you may know him, this was his Postdoc, this was his job talk for uh, when he <laughs> was searching for a faculty job. Uh, he did a beautiful experiment in the lab of, uh, of uh, in Pablo in MIT. And that's uh, 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 an experiment where he measured the two terminal conductance of the graphene in the mu equal. Uh, Actually, he measured it. Uh, this is the function of gate voltage. So, zero doping, the mu equals zero, is centered the, the, the zero point here. Okay, and uh, ignore the, the numbers on the scale. And uh, he measured the two terminal conductance as a function of gate voltage in a, a tilted magnetic field. And by tilting the the, uh, the uh, magnetic field, uh, what you can do is uh, assuming that the ground state is a cathode antiferromagnet, and if you apply, uh, if you tilt the magnetic field such that the Zeeman energy becomes larger and larger, you gradually tilt it 
into a pheromone. So you can drive a transition, a continuous transition from a catted anti-ferromagnet, uh, which is an insulating state, to a ferromagnet. Okay? And, um, uh, and when you do this, uh, what uh, Andrea has observed is that the conductance at zero doping evolve uh, continuously from zero to almost two e square over each. Now, why is that? What is the interpretation? So uh, maybe this is something I should have mentioned earlier. Of all the, the four phases I showed you before, uh, that uh, are all some broken symmetry state, the only one that is conducting, in fact, theoretically expected to be an even uh, almost perfect conductor, is the ferromagnet. And the reason for it is, uh, this is a story by itself, but uh, the, the spin, spin uh, polarization in the bulk uh, supports uh, conducting edge states uh, on, the, on, on the edge, uh, conducting edge states that are helical edge states, and therefore they would contribute twice as well over edge to the conductance. Okay? So driving the transition uh, from a canted anti magnet to the cell magnet uh, appears in the conductance as a transition from insulator to a conductor. And that is an experimental, uh, what looks like really an experimental proof that the relevant phases are in fact the spin over the red ones. Okay? Yeah? In your previous phase diagram, you had just a very light dash line between these two yeah. phases. Are you trying to do that? dash line is a, so the dash line is a, is a second order transition. This is a second order transition. Okay, if you drive, okay, here the phase diagram is not as a function of magnetic field. There yeah. is another axis. But if you, uh, if you follow, if you could tune the interactions throughout through this dashed line, there would be a, a second order transition. And the way to understand it is really just. There is just a continuous. A continuous, activation. yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, so uh, so that seemed to have closed the story about what is the nature of the new equal zero quantum boy state 10 years ago. However, quite recently, uh, and of course now that it's there, you discover that many people have observed it also before, there were uh, imaging experiments in STM by several groups. What I'm showing you here is the, uh, uh, the left uh, figure is from the group of uh, Ali Azdani in Princeton. The second one is from uh, uh, Benjamin Saseka at uh, in France. And uh, as you see, what you see in STM is very nice uh, evidence for a calculated distortion or a bond order state. And in the Saseka group experiment, actually, he has a, a setup where he can change the screening environment quite uh, dramatically because he has an STO uh, substrate. And uh, he found that in some regime of parameters, you even see a charge density. Okay? So this brings a question. Um, because uh, it appears to be consistent with the two other phases. And the odd thing about it, besides the fact that, okay, it may contradict the transport experiment, which, which uh, point towards spin order, uh, to realize such child ordered state, you need attractive interactions on the short, uh, on the short range uh, sector. And, uh, that's there's a question mark, okay? Um, all right, so uh, so this is the the situation in in uh, in a monolayer graphene, um, and now I'm getting to the the bilayer. We see that the same the same uh, idea that maybe the 
some attractive interaction uh, uh, going on there, or that the picture, the model for the interaction is incomplete, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show up in Bayer as well. So um, in a Bayer graphing, uh, the nice thing about it is that uh, in addition to a magnetic field and its still triangle, there is another experimental knob you can tune to explore the phase diagram, and that is a displacement field. So in a dual gated uh, setup, you can independently control the filling factor, which is the doping, and the uh, interlayer uh, electric field. Okay? And that's a displacement field we denote by D. And uh, uh, and the, 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 this displacement field uh, acts on the, because, because the, the value degree of freedom has different support on the two layers, such that going from one value to another changes the configuration on the top or bottom layer, the, the displacement field acts like a Zeeman, uh, Zeeman uh, splitting for the value sector. Okay, so, uh, so now we're going, instead of just four flavors, you're going to have eight. The eight flavors are the uh, valley, which is split by D, uh, the um, spin, and there's another degree of freedom uh, that is called an orbital, okay? And uh, yeah, sorry. So, so the valley is split because wave functions close to one valley are mostly on top. Yeah, layer. that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. In fact, uh, among the, so there are two orbitals, zero and one, and the zero orbital always has support on only one layer, but for valley K and the other valley is the other layer. Okay. There's a symmetry. Um, okay. So this is a. Uh, how the single particle uh, spectrum look like. Now, uh, here I'm, I'm going to go flip this, uh, through this very uh, briefly. In biological people also observe the, um, a phase that is, uh, the new equal zero state and uh, tuning these two parameters of magnetic uh, field and displacement field, you get a phase diagram that has Additional uh, additional phases that you don't get in a monolayer because the displacement field actually encourages a charge density wave, uh, or if, which you like, if you like, is just layer polarized. Okay, layer polarized is charge density, and it can appear even without interactions uh, if you have if you have a strong enough uh, displacement. So there, there are no, no phases, and there is also the same transition we discussed from cantered antiferromagnet to a ferromagnet. And this is how things looked like uh, back uh, like 10 years ago um, uh, at new equal zero. Okay, but now I'm coming to the story that I'm interested in, in and that's uh, what happens when the filling factor is above zero, but still small, so you are still within the zero Landau level, but it can be split to all its eight states. And, uh, and before showing you experimental results, let's just uh, see what, are the, what is the uh, Landau level diagram from the single particle uh, picture. So in a single particle, uh, uh, there are eight, as I said, there are eight, lab, uh, eight uh, states labeled by spin, orbital, and, and valley. And uh, at uh, zero, at new equal zero, the, the four of them are negative states and four of them are positive. So at uh, new equal zero, you have four states that are filled completely filled. Uh, but if nu is above zero, then you start to fill the top four flavors. And uh, it turns out 
that because of uh, interactions, there is a, 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 because of exchange, there is a spin gap that polarizes the, all the negative levels. And there's a lot of evidence for that. So uh, effectively, the, uh, the single particle states we, have, we are left to work with are that all the, all the, uh, uh, the negative states are spin polarized and are filled, they're like uh, inert background. And now, now you start to fill four levels uh, that are uh, all the same spin, but different values and all that. Now, what happens is that as a function of displacement field, uh, the values are splitting. And they split in such a way that at some, there's some critical value of D, the note that D star, where there is a level crossing. Okay? So if you believe this non interacting picture, at low displacement field, you expect to have an orbital, all orbital polar, polarized field. A ground state. At this star, there is a transition, a first order transition, and just level crossing to some body polarized state. Okay. Um, and now let's look at uh, what the uh, experiments tell us. So, what I'm showing now is a very uh, busy phase diagram. This is uh, the experimental, uh, it, it is already published. This one, it's uh, uh, the work of uh, Jun Zhu's lab uh, with K1 in the first order. And uh, what they measure is just conductance or resistance, if you like, a two terminal. And, and they present it as a color in a color code such that all the regions that are dark are zero resistance states. So they are, in fact, the quantum whole state. OK? And, and the phase diagram here is for a fixed magnetic field, which is an active Tesla in this case. And the axes are displacement field, where this is the zero, and filling factor ranging between 1 and 4. So first of all, you see very clearly all the integer states. U equal one, two, three, four. Okay, these are just standard one to four integer one to four states. But what happens in between is that you see a lot, a lot, a lot of fractions. In fact, you even see some uh, even denominator uh, fractional quantum to one state. You see very busy. Uh, set of uh, uh, quantum mode state, which is a very high quality sample. Uh, but uh, there is a global feature in this phase diagram, and that's uh, and these uh, red dashed lines. There is a, a sharp transition from uh, if you if you are uh, uh, part at a uh, fixed filling factor. There is always, as a function of displacement field, there is a sharp transition from something to something. By something to something, I mean either one fractional quantum wall to another, uh, with a peak in the resistance in the middle, or a fractional quantum wall effect that essentially disappears above, uh, uh, above the, or the other way around, metallic state or non quantum wall that turns into a quantum wall at high field. Okay? So uh, there is, if you like, there is a continuous line where the ground state changes its, its nature in some way. Okay? And uh, uh, if it, uh, and we are not surprised by it because I just showed you that the non interacting picture also has this feature of a level crossing, so there must be a transition. But if we were to believe the non-interactive picture, the uh, transition line should have been a straight line. There is no reason that it would depend on the feeling factor. Okay? 
Okay, so it's just fixed by the, maybe I, I should go back to the previous. And part the stuff. Yeah. living factor is uh, with respect to half filling, right? It's with respect to half filling, uh, yeah, it's with respect to half filling of the, of the zero flando level, okay? Right. So with respect to zero though, yeah. okay? Yes. So by, uh, for example, by filling, filling factor one would be that the, the first level is completely full, etc. okay? So, okay, so the, uh, so there is a question here and uh, there is a transition line that shows uh, a B star as a function of mu and uh, it has this structure that in some range between one and two, it's decreasing and here it's increasing. And, uh, uh, and now I'm going to, uh, uh, to tell you that the, this trend or the, if you like, the sign of a slope here is a very important clue about the nature of the interactions. Okay, so in particular, if we focus on the range between uh, filling factors one and two, we see a negative slope of this star as a function of mu. Uh, okay, uh, however, there was another experiment, uh, an older experiment in this case, by uh, Andrea Young again, now in uh, a uh, group in Santa Barbara, where uh, what he measures is uh, capacitance. It's not a transport measurement, it's capacitance, but the capacitance measurement is nice because it can directly measure the charge polarization on the layers. So uh, the, the orange and blue here are opposite polarities of the, of the electronic state on the layer. And uh, what it's showing is again a phase diagram that should be comparable to this one in the same range of uh, filling factors. Uh, if you focus on it, you see that um, it looks very different. Most importantly, um, it's uh, the, the slope of this star versus mu is opposite sign. It's, it's actually almost flat, but slightly positive. Okay, now you can ask, uh, you can say the following, that there's another difference between this experiment and this experiment, and that's the magnetic field. Magnetic field is much higher here. Okay, you can say, okay, so what? You give me two experiments, two different groups, two different samples, two different measurements. This is a bias flow, this is capacitance, and it's also, different magnetic field, so apples and oranges, why do I care? Uh, and that's, uh, 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 there, there's a point in it, uh, but uh, uh, you can uh, go back to the, the same sample where, uh, where June and Kerr has observed uh, this negative slope and, uh, and play with the third axis, which is a magnetic field, and see whether it changes in the same direction as in Andrea Young's uh, work. And that indeed I, was they saw, yes. So yes. It maybe it's something obvious that I'm just missing, but what okay. is the line that I should look at on the right that I see that has positive slope? Ah, I, I, it's, it's, there are this, many lines uh, this is the white, so this is the white, uh, the white line. It looks kind of noisy and flat to me. Yeah, but Okay, if you look, uh, if you analyze the data more carefully, yeah. it's slightly positive, but okay. definitely, positive. it's definitely not like, not uh, right. uh, negative. Okay, yes. Of the curves around the, close to the middle, yeah, on the left, you have also features that crown D for zero. Oh, yeah. But on the left, on the left, left experiment, the 18 Ah, the, yeah, in, right. In the middle, you also have like features which, yes. right, uh, which ones you all look Yeah, like you know, all the circles. So. <laughs> so if you look near, so near zero, so near zero, yeah, yeah near zero displacement, you also see 
some features that look like transition. That's another story that I'm not getting into, but yeah, yeah you know, it's a very rich phase diagram. But yeah, there are additional, there are additional transitions here from some d equals zero states to, by the way, the true d equals zero is not exactly a straight yeah, line, but okay. But there, there are additional features in addition. Uh, okay, I'll get to uh, later, but there are, uh, there are even states that are appearing just on the distal line, okay, fractional states. Okay, so there, there are more, more to it, but I, I want to focus on this global feature, which is the distal versus mu. And uh, uh, how do we, we get a phase diagram that has this global structure? And it turns out that if you just do R3 for uh, repulsive interactions, I'm already telling you a head start, you never get you never get something like that. But let me first finish telling you about the experiment. So so uh, K and June went back to their data, their sample, where in the 18 Tesla they saw a negative slope. And now they uh, they studied it more carefully for different values of the magnetic field, and they change magnetic field, and uh, they see, that, and, and here, uh, to, to actually uh, uh, keep track of the magnetic field dependence, they looked at particular field interactions where you have a very, very clear quantum hole state, and the transition is sharp, and it shows up as a peak in the Resistance, something like this. Okay, so this is the distal. Okay, you go from one zero resistance state to another via a sharp peak. That's the signature of the first order transition, or appears like. It. So they keep track of this uh, distal uh, as a function of magnetic field for different filling factors, and uh, the main uh, the main observation I want to point is that the, uh, the slope, the vista versus new uh, slope, changes sign at some uh, magnetic field, which we estimate to be around 26 Tesla. Yeah, I have yeah? questions that in the uh, parabolic quantum Hall effect, uh, the filling and the magnetic field are related. That's right. Is it here, the case here? That, no, that's right, but here, but even then, you can uh, you can you can play with the doping and the magnetic field, and you can keep filling factor uh, fixed ah. and change magnetic field. Okay. So yeah. and here in this system, you can control independently magnetic field, doping, and displacement field. Yes. Okay. Um, Okay. So yeah. Is out of plane magnetic field, or you're also controlling the same? No, no, uh, no tilting. So no, the magnetic field is purely perpendicular here. Uh, actually, if you tilt it, all you all you do is usually it encourages the ferromagnetic. But don't look at it. Okay. So uh, so that's so I want to emphasize two observations. Uh, one, there is some critical field, magnetic field, that we denote BS around 26 Tesla, where the slope in the phase, diagram, uh, the, the phase boundary changes from positive to negative. And there is another feature, if you go to a uh, much lower field, down to 11 Tesla, then the distal vanishes altogether, mainly the, this uh, negative slope becomes more and more negative as you decrease magnetic field until it hits zero, okay? And then uh, it becomes, uh, uh, so there's another, there are two characteristic field scale, one for vanishing of this star and one for changing slope, okay? So, okay, now I'm coming to what uh, we have done. Uh, so basically we, we say before, let's go back to the theory of Haritonov uh, and try to see what can be modified to capture 
uh, this uh, behavior because just applying Hariton of model uh, with the pulsive interaction, I, in fact, with any interaction, doesn't give you uh, this behavior. Okay? Um, but, uh, uh, and then we, we generalize it. So here I'm writing the, the model out front uh, very schematically. Uh, this is just a model for the interaction, which you put on top of the lambda level. In you write in the lambda level basis, and it includes three terms. The first one is uh, the U naught is just a screen Coulomb interaction, um, and that's uh, as I mentioned before, as you for symmetric term. Okay, and it's there, and it's strong, and it's big, and in fact, it has a particular magnetic field dependence because the scale of the Coulomb energy goes like uh, uh, the inverse of the magnetic length. So it uh, grows like a square root of B, okay? Now, uh, the other two are the, the Hariton of like uh, uh, terms, uh, which are the UXY and the UZ, as, as I mentioned before, it's an XXZ model in the Tau in the valley uh, sector, these are Pauli matrices. And the uh, interaction parameters here are, uh, there, there is some uh, coefficient and a scale. And the scale, because it's a lattice scale, there's an extra factor of the lattice constant over L on the magnetic lens. So uh, this, uh, the, the scale of it, Assuming that G alpha are just numbers, let's say, or independent of field, then uh, the scale is growing like linearly with field, okay? Um, so uh, this is important. There are two different uh, magnetic field behaviors, and here you can see how magnetic, changing magnetic field for the same feeling factor actually changes the balance between different interactions. But there, are, there, are, there is more to it. So, the, the, uh, so you see that here I wrote a, a more generalized version of, of Hariton model where the coefficients, uh, the use, the different use are not necessarily constant. They have some uh, wave vector dependence. Okay? Namely, some finite range. We allow them to have finite range. And uh, uh, Haritonov is just the simplest version of it where all the Gs are just constant. In which case, you just have two parameters for the short range interaction. Okay? Now, uh, and as I said, it doesn't explain the data. So, what uh, Udit has done is to say, okay, let's assume that just phenomenologically at this point that it is modified, there is some uh, structure to these uh, interactions. And why would there be such a structure? Um, uh, we have to remember that uh, the model we are writing is projected into a zero lambda level. And in truth, the interaction is an effective interaction introduced after this projection. So uh, it, uh, it is uh, not given by the microscopic interaction. It's renormalized in some way that may be non trivial. I get to it so. But phenomenolo phenomenologically, we just said, OK, let's correct it. Let's multiply the constants for each alpha. Here, alpha stands for either x, y, or z. We multiply it by a factor that has a a, a non-trivial correction with an opposite sign, okay? And we chose this Gaussian form just for, uh, for convenience of calculation, but uh, it's actually, it has some finite range. Uh, uh, so there's a, a non-trivial Q dependence, but more importantly than the finite range, there is a different magnetic field dependence. There is here a coefficient, kappa, a, a dimensionless parameter that um, 
it scales like, uh, it describes the ratio between the Coulomb energy and the, the um, cyclotron uh, energy, and it goes in bivalent of thin, it goes like one of those square root of thin. Okay, now what is the logic behind the, this guess? Because we put it as a guess, but it's coming from uh, uh, some uh, some idea about uh, uh, what calculation you need to do to get it. Uh, it's actually, so I'm just focusing on the correction. Where is the correction coming from? And it's coming from um, uh, mixing with higher lambda level. So as I said, we have projected the interaction to the zero lambda level, but uh, if you uh, uh, look at uh, the interaction, uh, uh, the effective interaction, and you have to account for many processes, including processes where you are uh, exciting a particle to higher levels and, and back. Okay, so you, you are, there is some coupling, there is some coupling of um, electrons in the, this is the zero lambda level, and you can jump up and down to negative or positive levels, and this kind of processes introduce uh, effective corrections to the interaction that it turns out uh, are uh, captured at least naively by a form of this kind. And in particular, and that's why they, why they have this uh, uh, dimension as parameter, because the, the strength of this coupling from zero to higher lambda level is controlled by the ratio of the uh, uh, Coulomb interaction to the cyclotron energy, okay? So you can think of it just uh, naively, you can think of it as uh, just second order perturbation theory, but you can do better and do a normalization group. This is actually what Udit is working on right now uh, to get uh, uh, the effect of, uh, of, of such uh, Landau level mixing. But in our, uh, uh, the, in the present work, we just assumed phenomenologic, phenomenologically that it has this form, that it's, it's, it has opposite sign, okay? And you can see that, uh, you know, if this is sufficiently strong, uh, it may even change the sign and turn at least some of the um, interaction parameters negative. Okay, yeah. Does the perturbation theory argument already give you the sign? Yeah, the perturbation theory definitely gives you the sign, but it's a bit misleading because it often does. Uh, but uh, so, so this is something to investigate, but uh, yeah, the perturbation calculation does give it, yeah? So, so you don't need to assume that some majority of that level or? No, 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 you can forget about this logo. No, this is just, uh, so uh, the, the thing is the following, you have some microscopic interaction, some complicated thing, but you're, you're not right. What we have in our model is a low energy projection. We're projecting everything on the wave functions on the, the low energy sector, which is the zero lambda level. But the interactions, since they are not so weak, they have contributions from if you like, in theor theories, uh, uh, theory words, it's, you know, there are many, many diagrams that come into the calculation and are, are uh, uh, describing scattering processes to higher Landau level. And that's, by the way, true also for any, you know, fractional quantum whole states in, in Daniel Marcinite uh, are also dominated by Landau level mixing. It is well known that. Uh, this can change the nature of the state from one to another in, in some feeling function. So this is no different in this case, but in our case, uh, it can lead to uh, such a, a negative correction that can be quite, quite big. And in particular, because notice that kappa is inversely proportional to the square root of p, it's becoming more and more dominant at low. Okay, so if you go to like 31 Tesla, 
things are dominated by uh, the simplest uh, thing. And that's what uh, I showed you before in the data from the Ayan and so on. But if you go to 18 Tesla and lower, or below 20 Tesla, then uh, these terms can be very dramatic. Uh, and, and basically what we have done is just repeating the mean field calculation with uh, this, uh, uh, this model and uh, getting uh, and trying to see what uh, in what conditions or in what regime of assumptions on these parameters we can recover the experiment. Okay, so I guess I'm running a bit late, so let me just uh, go through it quickly. So uh, I remind you that from the experimental data, we have two constraints, two quantitative constraints on the model. Uh, that is the BS and the B star. And these are, of course, specific to the sample of, uh, um, of uh, this particular uh, sample. Uh, but uh, they, uh, they allow us to explore the, uh, uh, what should be the, the, the correct correction parameters in order to realize uh, these constraints. Now, so for example, you can see that uh, uh, GLL, by the way, GLLZ and GLLXY are the corrections, just the corrections to the, to the go back just to remind what they are. So we, we do have, uh, oh, I lost my mouse again. Oh, we see it here. What? You see it here? Yeah, <laughs> it's seven months. Oh, we, we need oh God. Yeah. It's there with a small volume yeah. screen. Just to make more terrible. So, uh, so first of all, uh, so I wanted to show you the the previous uh, the previous uh, uh, slide. Well, this is the, the this coefficients are the definition of my. Uh, the parameters. So there are two of them, GLLZ and GLLXY. And, uh, and we find that uh, basically in the bottom line, we can find a range of the phase diagram, uh, which still has some freedom, but is limited by the constraints that we get from the experimental observations. And for this choice of parameters, uh, we can recover the data and we can recover the change of sign at the right place. Okay, so for example, given that our, the experimental data, the BS, uh, they tell us that BS is 26 Tesla, you see that uh, the GLL has, has some dependence uh, as a function of G0. Uh, which is also a parameter, but it must lie on this line. That's what it for itself. So it limits our uh, regime of parameters a bit. And uh, uh, and we, so first of all, we recover the day. Second, we can do better, we can do more, which is to predict how will the phase diagram look at a particular filling factor, and we focus on mu equal to because this is where our three four calculations are of solid ground. And uh, this is what we found here. The, the, this is a phase diagram. Uh, this delta D is just D, it's just a displacement field, a magnetic field. At a particular, here it's a particular filling fraction two. And what we find is that. Uh, there is a, a range of magnetic fields where you expect to see a transition from a, a valley polarized to orbital polarized, just like the usual uh, thing that we've seen. But there is a, a sufficiently high magnetic field. Another phase opens up. We, we call it a valley orbital entanglement. It's actually a valley and orbital uh, uh, coherent state which is a superposition of states with uh, orbitals uh, zero plus and, uh, and one minus, okay? So, and uh, it's a realization in, in, uh, in imaging. So it is in fact a phase that is 
uh, analogous to what I called before the Kekule distortion phase. And uh, um, in principle, it could show up, uh, this is also the, the phase diagram that we get for different choice of parameters, but this is less realistic, so that let's not, uh, I think this appears to be the most consistent with reasonable values for the interaction parameters and with all the data, the experimental evidence that we have, but the, the realization of the, uh, the value of the tangent state in, in real space could be a, a bond order state that we expect to see in EMG. Additionally, we, we also have other predictions that uh, are still work in progress, which is there should be some collective mode associated with the appearance of uh, this phase, uh, which possibly you can measure with electric means because it, it has to do with polarization oscillations. Okay, so um, so that's uh, that's our results and. Uh, let me just summarize and mention some bit of output. So first of all, the, the main uh, um, point I tried to make is that the structure of the global phase diagram of uh, bilirubin in the feeling factor range between one and two, this is the one we focused on uh, specifically, it shows a critical line, this star, which changes as a function of mu in a manner that uh, has a, a negative slope at lower b and positive slope at uh, higher b. And the negative slope part is something that uh, requires to have some attractive interaction component. So, the, the model that works better to be consistent with this behavior is that there is an effective interaction projected to the zero lambda level that, is, that has no structure, both in Q space and its field, magnetic field dependence. And uh, it represents some competition between repulsive and attractive components that compete with each other depending on the strength of the field. And uh, one of the, the main predictions uh, directly from our calculation is that there should be, or there could be a bond over a Kule distortion phase at new equal to uh, insufficiently strong magnetic field. So this is still to be investigated. Uh, now, interestingly, just I want to make two last points. One is that, uh, uh, remember the story I told you in the beginning about monolayer graphene, uh, uh, the fact that there seems to be a contradiction between transport experiments and the imaging. One of them sees, seems to see magnetic uh, spin ordering, the other seems to see charge ordering. Uh, so apparently, uh, introducing the model with interactions that have a, a no structure in Q space, like the type that we introduced, also explains, uh, also explains that. And in fact, there is a nice uh, a work by Dalapati uh, and uh, Ribuka and uh, uh, student uh, Anku Das, where they, uh, they uh, explore the phase diagram uh, in a monolayer graphene with interaction model that looks more like ours for the bilayer, because of course it's there for you know, bilayer, monolayer, whatever. Uh, and what they find is that the phase diagram is much richer and you can have coexistence of spin order than charge order which would, uh, uh, you know, uh, settle all the, you know, the, the debate about the nature of the ground state in that case. There might be no contradiction, in fact. Uh, it's just that you different experiments see different parts of the elephant, so to speak. And um, finally, 
this is uh, uh, something uh, uh, very interesting that we're still working on in collaboration with June's uh, uh, group. Um, uh, so far, I just told you about the integer quantum wall effect, uh, Hartley Fock captures the general structure, and so on. But on top of that, if you put strong correlations, you get fractional quantum wall states. And one of them is the seventh field. And that is a very interesting observation that um, if you look at just on this transition line, there's a very, very narrow uh, range of characters in the phase diagram where the seven fifth develops a, a sharp resistance minimum. So it's a very stable quant fractional quantum wall state. And it's at the crossing point, it's at the transition. Now, it is very, very tempting to interpret this uh, because of this level crossing that I described as some kind of uh, uh, hypering uh, MM, uh, MMN state. Uh, in fact, it's a 3 3 2. Uh, that has the right feeling factor. And it's a two, co so it's a two component fractional quantum wall state that was never conclusively seen in Gallium Martian or any standard two beds, but possibly it is realized here. It's not clear. It's, not, it's a suggestion, okay? But uh, what I, I want to make uh, is, uh, uh, I mean, there, there's still no theory for what's going on. In fact, uh, uh, this is taken from a published data, but without the, the red circle, because <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand the paper. They focused on the three halves, and they didn't know what to say about the seven pit. Uh, what I want to, uh, what we are exploring now, is the fact that if you account for the physics that uh, I described, which is that there are effective interactions that are more complicated, possibly there may be a competition between creating a particular fractional quantum wall state and creating a, a value coherent state, like a calculating, which is another form of many body broken symmetry state. And, uh, and possibly there is an it, uh, there, there's something, there, there's a, a clue from the experiment that is not yet published, which is that this fractional quantum wall state eventually disappears at very high magnetic field. So we are thinking maybe one reason for it to disappear is that uh, eventually it fails the development of this value of the phase insert. But at this point, it's just a speculation. Stay tuned, maybe, for my, my next visit. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. Sorry for yeah. taking a bit of time.